a very common ingredient to actually support the porosity of the hair. Hey YouTube, what's going on? Super excited for this video. If you are new to my channel, welcome to my channel. I'm so glad you are here. I'm a cosmetic chemist specializing in natural hair care and the creator of curly chemistry where I help you guys understand your products and your hair from a cosmetic chemist perspective and I also hope you guys thought hair care lines as well and today we are talking about four very common ingredients that are known for changing your hair porosity why should you even care because your porosity determines how products interact with your hair and your porosity also determines tangles versus manageability and dryness, frizziness, and breakage. So your porosity has a lot to do with the health of your hair. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing those ingredients so that your hair does not continue to fluctuate when it comes to its porosity, okay? So stay tuned. Okay, so number one is going to be cleansing surfactants. These are found in your shampoo. However, not all cleansing surfactants are made the same. So cleansing surfactants are ingredients that literally go to the surface of the cuticle and the scalp, and they are designed to remove oil and dirt from the hair and pretty much washing it down the drain. Now, since a lot of these surfactants have a negative charge, an anionic charge, they tend to leave negative charges on the hair, which can then lift the cuticle. And this can lead to your cuticle retaining less moisture, breakage, lack of lymph retention. You already know how the story ends. But it's really gonna be the harsh cleansing surfactants like sodium lauryl sulfate, for example, that has a higher anionic charge, which is then going to lift the cuticle even more. For more information on surfactants that are really good for our hair, check out the Natural Hair Care Wisdom Flashcard. I talk way more about these in that ebook. Okay, number two is going to be ingredients found in relaxers, okay? Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and as you guys may know, relaxers have a very high pH. That is what makes relaxers do what they do. They lift the cuticle because of that high pH. High pHs tend to lift the cuticle. And once they go inside the cuticle, they're breaking the disulfide bonds, which is changing the hair texture. And once you break the disulfide bonds within the hair, that compromises the protein, the strength, the integrity of the hair. So not only do you have a lifted cuticle, which is gonna to lead to lack of moisturization, like retention, like retaining moisture, but you're also breaking the inside of the hair, which is going to compromise the protein. So you kind of have like a double whammy here when you are dealing with relaxers and even texturizers as well, okay? Hence the reason why you have like a lot of products on the market right now, like bonding products like the Olaplex and the K18, which you know are known for helping to mend these bonds, but personally, I have not seen where someone has relaxed their hair bone straight and gone back to fully natural. I haven't seen that, but I will say that these products do help to strengthen the hair and have a level of restoration to the hair as well. Okay, number three, a very common ingredient actually support the porosity of the hair. If you already know, you are curly chemistry student, A1 student, Apple cider vinegar, hands down, okay? Apple cider vinegar is acidic. Our hair, our scalp is acidic. Now what makes it so great is because the pH is so low, it's naturally going to close the cuticle. And believe it or not, we low key want a closed cuticle because we want to lock in as much moisture as we want. We want smooth cuticle, which will then give us smoother hair, easier detangling, manageability. On top of that, ACV is going to support a healthy pH balance, not only for our hair, but our scalp as well, which can then minimize a lot of the scalp conditions that we may have, especially things like dandruff and bacteria and yeast and fungus that grow on the scalp. So ACV is hands down A1. I have a recipe in the Natural Hair Care Flashcard that I recommend. Definitely check it out. Last but not least, and honestly, this is gonna be completely rare, but I'm gonna say it anyway, but products can change the porosity of your hair. Every hair care product, especially any water-based hair care product, shampoo, conditioner, et cetera, that you have in your home, in the stores, has a pH to it. 
When I do my consultations for those who want to start hair care lines, I always tell them, make sure your pH is compatible to our hair. Somewhere between 4.5 and 5.5. Anything over 6, I do not recommend it at all because that can raise the cuticle, change the porosity of the hair. The reason why I say that this is rare is because most products in the stores and whatnot have a acceptable pH. They have gone through the proper testing and everything involved development wise to ensure that what you get in your hands is a pH acceptable product. However, there are people who do create things at home, a lot of small businesses that I work on a daily basis and sometimes they may not know how to create a formula that has a acceptable pH for the hair. So if you're buying different products and you notice that okay my hair is not retaining a lot of moisture like it used to or my hair is becoming frizzier over time using this particular product more than likely either that product is just a bad product or the pH of that product is just slightly off it's a thing it's a rare thing but it is a thing so if you are a creator out there and you're thinking about creating a hair care line or you currently have a hair care line you want to finalize or optimize your product definitely check out the consultation link i have below and i would love to work with you and get your products to where they need to be if you have enjoyed this video and learned something new that you can implement into your hair care regimen and hair care journey, if you would like more curly chemistry content, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Make sure your notifications are on to stay in the loop for more curly chemistry content. And for those who watch me every week, thank you guys so much. If you guys can do me a favor and please share this channel, share on Instagram, share this video on um, Facebook, just share, share, share. I truly truly appreciate it and thank you guys for liking the video as well okay and if you guys share on instagram tag me at charmy369 and if you share on facebook tag me at curly chemistry okay now of course i have a question for you you know my question is with summer like literally being around the corner what are your summer hair care plans okay are you doing protective styling and if so what's like what are we doing? Are we doing twists? Are we doing braids? Are we doing like, what's the style? Comment below, let me know. And if you have no, you know, summer hair care plan, like girl, it's the usual. I'm just deep conditioning and shampoo and call it a day. That's okay too. Comment below. Let me know what your summer hair care plans are and I cannot wait to join the conversation with you. And if you're interested in learning more about ingredients in your hair from a cosmetic chemist perspective, definitely check out the Curly Girls Got to Hair Care Ingredients and the Natural Hair Care Wisdom Flash Cards. I have a link below for you with more information. And if you're interested in starting a hair care line, no matter where you are in the world, I look forward to assisting you and helping you bring your idea to fruition, okay? One-on-one. -on -one. So definitely check out the link below as well. All right, guys, I love you and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.